guys for all joining us in this beautiful day. Um, I'm going to start by thanking a few people. Um, I got to thank the BP. Look, I mean, I don't think the BP and his team have received a lot of credit or taken a lot of credit for the role that they've played in this journey so far. But suffice it to say, we would not be standing here right now without the BP's ongoing friendship and fidelity. And I'm extremely grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. I want to thank Void Mobility, um, which sponsored um, the grant that helped catalyze the development of this Uni Mini. I want to thank Domino Park and Two Trees for hosting the Uni Mini and hosting all of us. Um, I want to thank my friends at Super Pedestrian, um, which are here with their Link scooters. Paul Stilly White helped start Uni way back when he was at TA, and he's been a friend throughout. Um, I want to thank our investors and team of backers. We've got a longtime friend and mentor. My friend Tucker Reed is here in the audience, who's been really with us since the beginning. Yosef, who is on our team, has been a rock in so many ways. Thank you, Yosef. We are here with an unprecedented coalition. Riders Alliance, Streets Pack, Bike New York, the RPA, Good Coat Bike Club, Open Plans, Transall, Los Libristas Unidos. Uh, we've got a powerhouse group here. I was gonna spend my time speaking with you about the tech specs of the Uni Mini, but instead, I wanna talk about something a bit more fundamental and profound. What exactly is the work that we're doing here? Why are we doing it? What is our purpose? A few days ago, someone said to me, um, you know, y'all making a lot of noise about bikes. Y'all starting a real movement about bike parking. So we find ourselves in the 21st year of the 21st century facing the absolute gravest of circumstances. The specter of climate change threatens to unravel our civilization as we know it. On our present course, we will leave the next generation with inundated cities, monster storms, and great famines. Our children will know lives of need and want. And that will be our legacy. On the other hand, never before in the history of the world has a society been so capable, so capable of transforming and averting disaster as we are right now. We have the knowledge, we have the tools, we have the know-how to avert this crisis today. We know that cars account for one of the greatest sources of CO2 emissions. We know that most car trips in our city are under three miles. And we know that converting those car trips to solutions like bicycles and scooters will help save our planet. And we know solutions like the Uni Mini are gonna help us get us there. The challenge is simple. Many New Yorkers wanna ride bikes, they really do, but they have no convenient and secure place to put them. One out of every four households in New York City has experienced bike theft, excuse me. One out of every four. The Uni Mini is about thinking big. We can bring bike parking to every corner of the city. We can make sure every New Yorker has access to green, sustainable transportation, no matter their race, color, class, or creed, white collar, blue collar, pink collar, every New Yorker must have access to green transportation. Now there are some voices that are gonna say, this is too hard, that maybe the politics of this moment are too fractious, that maybe we ought to scale it back a little bit. Maybe we should wait till next year, try something new. These voices don't come from our rivals. They come from our own neighbors. They come from our own hearts. They represent our own doubts, our own reservations, our own fears. We've always had the knowledge and the know-how, but we've lacked the fortitude and the courage to think differently. To change our destiny, we'll have to change the way that we think. We'll need to do things differently. So yes, UNI is about building secure bike parking, but it's about asking 
fundamental questions. Can we build great infrastructure again? Do we have the courage to summon the audacity to change the way that we do business? Can we leave a better future for our children? One with cleaner air, one with safer streets, one with economic prosperity for all. Can we deliver on the promises that we've made year after year after year after year? And can we be the kind of city, the kind of people that we really want to be? Now, I want to share with you all that I'm so optimistic for this moment, in part because we are on the cusp of new leadership. This is the second time that I've stood next to the borough president, Eric Adams. I've lost, for a public launch of UNI, I've lost count, however, of the number of meetings, the conference calls, the Zooms that I've held this team. I can tell you this, there's been no single elected official that has been more involved, more critical, more crucial to our journey than Borough President Eric Adams. So he's been there for us in first down, on fourth down, and all the downs in between, and we are so grateful. So please give it up for your BP, Eric Adams. Appreciate you so much, uh, you know, for this amazing uh, display of how do we come together to uh, solve real problems. And Shabazz, I remember the conversation we had when uh, I met him at an event. And he put this idea in my ear, and when I got back to the office, I called the team together, and I said, you know, I met an amazing young man. Uh, let's get together and hear his idea. But also think about Eric. You know, Eric, we talked about years ago, and Eric approached me one day, and he put in my ear this whole concept of decreasing speed. And I was like, are you serious? <laughs> and he did a video, and and it just took on steam. And so I, I say that to say, you know, because a few days ago I sat down with uh, a young man who had a different opinion about policing. And I sat down and I really encouraged people to see the video. It was a very healthy conversation uh, that just took on, uh, for whatever reason, it took on a life of his own, but it wasn't contentious. Uh, I sit down and talk to people. That's a revolutionary idea in a space where everyone believes they have to be right to make someone else wrong. We don't have to be that way. We could learn so much of just sitting down and say, I want to seek to understand so I could be understood. And the reason we're standing here today is because I sought to understand. The reason we decrease speed limits in the city is because I sought to understand. The reason we're going to live together in our city is because we're going to seek to understand. And I don't care when people complain about me, call me names. In the long run, we are going to learn to live together. That's it. We're going to learn to live together. Folks better get used to this. That's what it's going to be about. And it's going to be painful sometimes. <laughs> you know, it's going to be painful. We're going to sit in a room with folks that we traditionally would rather not sit in the room. So it's going to be painful. We're in a growing moment. We're about to give birth to what it's like to be in a city as diverse as New York. So we, we're going to feel gr growing pain, but it's a great moment to feel growing pain because when we come on the outside, other side, we're going to be amazing people. And so to all the names that Shabazz mentioned, Longtime uh, allies, I, one of the most significant organizations uh, that I don't know if he mentioned or not is Good Company Bike Club. Yeah. Waking up the African American uh, and other communities of colors, the experience. Why is that significant? Anyone that's part of the bike movement would tell you that when you try to do infrastructure bike lanes in communities of color, you get a lot of pushback because people are saying, you're coming and not talking to us when you're doing it. And so this has become the ambassador to those communities. If we want to change people, we have to get on the ground. You will never be a good shepherd if you don't hang out with the sheep. And this <laughs> good company, bike club, young, African-American professionals uh, that are really engaged in 
How do we bring people to the place? Don't meet people where you are. Meet people where they are and take them where they ought to be. If you meet people where you are, you will never be able to reach them and bring them to where you want them to be. Hercules, my staffer, rides all the time, part of the riding movement. Ryan Lynch rides all the time, part of the riding movement. I'm on my bike all the time. So we, we don't just talk about it. We're like the hair club for men guy. You know, we are <laughs> the clients of this movement. And so uh, having a bike hub like this is crucial. I believe New York City is the hub of innovation. Let's get back there. Let's be unafraid uh, to try something new. We become so stagnant as a city. We have, we have a culture of can't and a culture of failure. What, what Shabazz went through just to do this was unbelievable. People started out saying no, no, no. We have a culture of no in this city. It's time to have a culture of yes, embrace failure that's healthy, so that we can get to the place that we want to get to because failure is part of that process. And so we're going to be a city of innovation, a city of ideas, no matter how crazy they may be, we will find a solution to those ideas. And we, we could also harness creativity and diversity. Uh, this city can tackle some of the most pressing problems by having that combination of creativity and di diversity. And only is a perfect example of, of a company that identified a problem and used innovative approach to solve this. This is a, a, an amazing small unit that's here, and this is how we're going to secure our bikes in the future. Access to secure bicycle parking is the number two reason that people are afraid to have bikes and move throughout the city. And so we want to take away that barrier from those who want to utilize bike. And we don't have nearly enough uh, bike parking spaces. Uh, I think TA Transportation Alternative pointed out in one of their studies uh, that one, uh, one parking space of, of cars, uh, we have one parking space in comparative, comparison to the number of biking parking that we need. So 116 to one, we need to change that scenario. And people are also, as, as Shabazz mentioned, you're afraid that your bike is going to be stolen. One in four families and hard-earning income New Yorkers are dealing with losing a bike. It costs a lot, and we want to make sure that we can have secure par parking in the city. And many of those at risk are those who are delivery men and women who use and utilize their bikes uh, to deliver their food. It's their way of living. They lose their bike. They lose their income in the process. And so we know the DOT is planning on doing 10,000 uh, new bike parking, but that's uh, in 2022. By the end of 2022, the movement is here now. We need to put it on fast track. We need to get it done right away. And that's why we, we, we're going to uh, partner with folks like uh, Shabazz to get it uh, moving forward in a more rapid pace. And you can see uh, just by looking at this group we have here, uh, the diversity of this movement, and you know, folks are excited to be here and being a, being a part of what we're attempting to accomplish. And it's not like it's it's not growing. <laughs> this this movement is growing at a pace that is unbelievable. You know, <laughs> DOT's own numbers. There was 1.8 million more bike trips in 2022, 2020 compared to 2019. 33 percent increase. People are seeing. One solution solve a multitude of problems. We have childhood diabetes and obesity. How about allowing children to ride, ride to school in a safe pathway all the time? We have people dealing with health care crisis. How about them riding their bike to see their doctors? How about having safe spaces for seniors to be comfortable and riding in our, our streets and then stopping off and interacting with each other? So biking does amazing way of bringing our city together. And the more infrastructure we build, the more likely people will use bikes in a real way. Best example, Brooklyn Bridge. The Brooklyn Bridge bike ramp, we, we have witnessed an 88% jump 
an average daily bike crossing over the bridge. A vision, a vision that was put out, materialized. People thought it was impossible. It was done, and people are using uh, the Brooklyn Bridge bike passing, and I'm just so happy. Every time I cross it, it's just a great experience to do it uh, on that separate lane. And so there's, we have uh, other hubs that were put in place. We did the rollout over at Atlantic Avenue. We're going to continue to do the rollout. Uh, it's in, imperative that we continue to make it happen. And so I think that we're creating a model that will be utilized uh, citywide. And we must make sure we go into those non-traditional communities, East New York, South Jamaica, Queens, Jamaica Avenue Subway Station, Sumpton Boulevard, Flatbush Avenue, uh, Canarsie, Rockaway, those areas where it's transportational, the transportation uh, is not there, the infrastructure is not there. We could use this, drop, park your bikes off, get on the subway, the bus, building out that infrastructure instead of a disconnected infrastructure, a unified in infrastructure. So I'm, I am just really happy to be here on many levels. Number one, as a platoon commander, this was my precinct. I watched this precinct where, where we used to drive down here and we used to see the place filled with crack pipes. We used to see a high level of crime and violence. I remember a few years ago with Carolyn Maloney spending the night over in the park fighting to say we need a park in this community and putting a million dollars in moving this initiative forward. I remember spending time here walking through the neighborhoods of watching this rich startup community that's coming here. It's a great place, folks. Don't let anybody kid you. This is a great, great, great borough and a great, great, great city. And just as 9-11 couldn't stop us, we got up 9-12. Darn it, COVID is not going to stop us. We're getting up again, and we're going to show this country how to lead cities in the right way. Thank you so much, and good job, Shabazz. So we show you. Okay. All right, we, got, we got three things left, y'all. We're going to do a mural unveil. We're going to take a group photo. We're going to park the first bike. Um, JP uh, is going to... We do a mural, uh, like every IRT subway station has a mosaic. And we've done it for every pod um, that's ever open, and now we have the mini. A little bit about JP, our theme here today is honoring communities of color that are unrepresented in conversations like these. JP is a local artist from Brooklyn, grew up in Flatbush in the foster care system, turned to art as a form of coping when he was shuffled from home to home. He didn't have access to an art studio or teacher or even his own room, so he taught himself how to paint in a homeless shelter in a small corner. Mm. He didn't have access um, to college counseling, but he got himself into art school anyway. And when he couldn't afford to go, he, he started his own art business to sell um, art to his neighbors and his friends. So y'all need to check him out after this. But for now, give it up for JP, who's going to unveil the Uni Mini uh, portrait. He has a bigger earring than mine. <laughs> uh, first off, you know this is um, this is all new to me. I don't usually uh, speak in front of like large crowds like this, especially like not with cameras and the press and stuff, <laughs> or, or the the next May, you know. Um, but I just want to thank you guys all for having me, um, and 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 Uni and, and all of us. Thank you to Shabazz for being a, a, an incredible mentor to me. Thank you to Tucker Reed, uh, Man Man, Vivian. You know, Hercules, Ike, all my friends who are here to support everyone. And, you know, without further ado, I want to show you guys the new Uni Mini painting. Thank you guys. 